All right, good morning, Foundry Church. Welcome to another virtual shakeout. My name is Hannah, and I'm conducting the lessons for our virtual shakeouts. So let me start off by asking you guys a question. How many of you guys have heard of knock-knock jokes? A lot of us, right? They're a fun little joke with a really short punchline, but usually they're good enough to make you giggle. So in today's Bible story, Jesus actually says, I will stand and knock at the door. He's not about to tell a joke, though. So let's find out what he had to say. So think about a time you guys had instructions to follow. Who gave them to you? What did you have to do? Why is it a good idea to follow those instructions? So today we're going to hear a story about some instructions that Jesus gave to the seven churches. So before we start our story, we're going to go on to our big picture question. We just learned this last week, so let's see if you guys can remember it. So our question is, what will happen when Jesus returns? And if you guys remember, the answer is, Jesus will destroy all evil and make all things new. This promise gives us great hope for eternity because one day Jesus will wipe away all the bad things. Let's listen to our story and think about how Jesus' promise to return shines through the letters that are given to the seven churches. So last week we learned that John had an incredible experience when living in exile in Patmos. He had a vision in which Jesus appeared to him. Jesus told John that one day he will return and make all things new. Today's story also comes from the book of Revelation, just like last week's. Our story today is called God's Warning to the Seven Churches. So once again, I'll have you guys open your Bibles and you can turn to Revelation chapter 2, or you can just kind of listen along to what I'm reading to you guys. So once again, this story is called God's Warning to the Seven Churches. The Apostle John was on the island of Patmos when he had a vision of Jesus. Jesus told John to write down a message for the seven churches. So that's what John did. To the church in Ephesus, you do not love well like you did when you first believed. Turn back and love like you used to. To the church in Smyrna, you are poor and are suffering, but really you are rich. You may face prison or death, but do not be afraid. To the church in Pergamum, you are faithful to me, and you tell others about me when it is hard, but not everyone in the church is doing the right thing. Some people are living like those who do not believe. Turn away from your sin and turn back to me. To the church in Thyatira, I know about your love, faithfulness, and service. You do not give up, but there is a wicked woman who teaches things that are not true, and some of you believe her. I will punish her and those who follow her teaching. Many of you do not follow her. Keep believing the truth until I come. To the church in Sardis, people think you are alive, but you are actually dead. You used to have a strong faith, but now you are weak. Wake up. Be ready for my return. Turn from your sin and remember the gospel. To the church in Philadelphia, you are a small church, but you listen to me and obey my word. I am coming soon. Be ready and keep believing. To the church in Laodicea, you are lukewarm, not hot and not cold, so you are not good for anything. I will spit you out of my mouth. You think you are rich, but you are actually poor, blind, and naked. Jesus told them to come to him, and he would make them rich. He would make them see and put clothes on them. Jesus said, See, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and eat with him and he with me. Jesus will reward every faithful and obedient believer. John wrote, Anyone who has ears to hear, listen to what the Holy Spirit says to the churches. So Jesus loves the church. His message to the seven local churches called them to turn away from their sin and remain faithful to him. We can learn from those churches. Through the church, Jesus helps believers work together to do God's plan. So the messages in these seven letters are very different, but they also had something in common. Can you guys think of what that might be? So most of these letters were pointing out faults in the church and telling them things they could do to improve and be better in their faith. The thing they all had in common was a promise to the believers that Jesus would return. Does anybody remember the church that Jesus said was not hot and not cold, but lukewarm and useless? That was Laodicea, right? So, so, hot water can be used to clean and cook. Cold water is refreshing to drink and can be used before refrigerators to help keep food cool and fresh. 
lukewarm water can't do either of those things. It's not hot enough to cook anything, and it's not cold enough to keep things fresh. Jesus warned the church that their passion for God was neither driving them to live righteously, nor was it refreshing to those who needed to see God's love. Their lukewarm feelings towards God made them useless. These seven letters show us God's grace because they prove that God cares about his church. The churches who obeyed the message of the letters were able to be a light for many people to the gospel. When they lived as God instructed them, God was able to use them to bring the gospel to lost people. These messages can be applied to us too. Jesus wants us to love him more than anything else. He doesn't want us to be afraid because he has power over evil. He wants us to repent of our sin and to turn back to him. He wants us to boldly proclaim the gospel to unbelievers. Jesus wants us to remember that he gives us abundant life. So it's important to remember that if we believe in Jesus, we are also part of the church. That means that these warnings apply to us too. Jesus died on the cross to provide us with the way to live forever. But our new life does not have to wait until Jesus comes back. We begin our new life with God right away. We read our Bibles and trust the Holy Spirit to guide us. We share the gospel with others so they can have new life with God too. All right, friends, we're now going to move on to our key passage poster. If you guys remember, it is from Revelation 21, verse 5. And it goes, He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Our key passage is a beautiful promise that gives us hope. Even when life is hard or scary, we can trust that one day Jesus will return. He'll make everything right again. So before you guys go today, I am going to pray for you. God, thank you so much for allowing us to hear your word today. We know that these scriptures are alive and they apply to us, Lord. We pray that we would live each day for you and on fire for you, Lord. We pray that as we go on through our day, we would spread the gospel with others and we would work our best to obey you, Lord. We thank you for everything you've done, including sending Jesus down to die for our sins and make us new. Lord, I pray that as we go on throughout the week, we would remain healthy and well and would have a good time with our friends and family. And maybe, maybe for those of us that are on spring break, we would get to enjoy this time of rest and peace. And I thank you for all of these friends who are here watching today's ShakeOut. In your name we pray, amen. All right, thank you once again, guys, for coming in and watching today's ShakeOut. Um, it means so much to me, guys, that you are here to view these and learn about Jesus with me. I hope you guys have a great rest of your week. Thanks so much.